Good afternoon. Um, I want to start a little off topic. Um, sad day. Um, I want to want to start with this. Thoughts and prayers go out uh, to my good friend Blake Anderson, uh, passing up his wife um, early this morning. Um, sad day, and thinking about Blake and his three kids. And, um, she fought hard, fought a valiant fight, um, beat breast cancer once, but it, but it wasn't beat. And uh, so think about him, been thinking about him, um, their whole family for a while now, and, and uh, just want to start with that. Um, total different topic. Um, Austin Kendall won our starting quarterback job. Um, tracked everything from spring practice through fall camp. Um, decision making, completion, completion percentage, uh, number of turnovers, scoring drives. Again, that's in every spring practice all the way through fall camp. And it was clear after Friday night scrimmage in the stadium that he earned it. Um, Jack Allison did a good job. I believe in him. I think that's important for, for everybody to know. I do believe in him. Uh, Trey Lowe is a guy that, that has prepared well and, and continues to improve and, 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 could, uh, and could potentially see some game action. And then uh, Jared Daigie was approved. Uh, his waiver was approved on Friday. Um, that doesn't really change uh, our plan for him. plan for him as of today is to redshirt. Uh, he's coming off off-season surgery. Um, he's been a little bit behind. I think that's the right decision for him. Um, obviously, that's as we start the season. Uh, we've had really two major evaluations since the last time that we spoke. Uh, we had a scrimmage on Friday night that we tried to make as game-like as possible. Um, under the lights, I thought some key guys that stood out. I'll start with defense. I think Dante Stills had a nice night in the stadium. Uh, Sean Mahone had his best practice that he's had uh, since since we've been here as a staff. Nick Troy Fortune is a is a true freshman at corner that has made some serious moves and is challenging uh, to be a starter at, at that position. Uh, Devin Wade had a pick six. You know, a guy that's kind of been around, kind of waited his turn. Um, and he's taking advantage of an opportunity to get a pick six, and then Ruben Jones showed up um, and was really active. Offensively, Mike Brown at our left guard position continues to perform well in game action. Uh, Colt McKibbins has been our best player thus far in camp. Um, and then Austin Kendall and, and Kennedy McCoy, uh, I thought Austin had his best day um, since he's been here. And then Kennedy McCoy looked like the player that I believe he can be, and that's one of the, one of the top running backs in our league. And then Sam James uh, had a couple big plays, which were which were all positives. Um, and then today we had basically a goal line, short yardage, a lot of work in the red zone, and then we did what we call a kick scrimmage. So we did a lot of live uh, special teams work: kickoff, kickoff return, punt, punt return. Put Evan in some different situations to kick. Um, and I thought there were some some standouts in that. I thought Petaway. In the short yardage goal line period, uh, was really impressive. Probably the best I've seen him. Uh, I thought our, our the, the guys on the offensive line, but Sills and, and Mike Brown had good periods in the short yardage goal line. I thought defensively, Dante Stills again, uh, second time in as many evaluations, really had created some negative plays. Um, and then in the special team segment, I like where Evan Staley's at. Uh, I think I told you this last time we talked. Uh, it was important that we added Josh as a punter, but maybe as equally as important uh, is adding him as a holder. A guy that started three years uh, uh, at LSU as a holder. He'll be our he'll be our starting holder when we when we uh, open up next week. Uh, that probably won't get as much press as my first announcement, but uh, he will be our starting holder. And uh, so fall camp ends today. You know uh, we'll have an off day tomorrow. Uh, we've got a lot of work done. I was not pleased with our Monday's practice. I thought we bounced back and did some better things today. Um, they earned the right. We've got a big concert. I can tell by looking at this crowd, this is a Gucci main uh, fan club here. So uh, I can tell there's a lot of, you know, y'all probably want to get out of here early and go to that concert too. too. So I know you're, the, you're looking, Chuck's looking at his watch. He wants to go. So uh, we'll finish up uh, fall camp officially this afternoon uh, with a walkthrough. Uh, as a staff, we'll start preparing for JMU. Of course, we did a lot of it this summer, but we'll start preparing for JMU uh, uh, tomorrow. And then uh, we'll have our first JMU practice on Thursday. Go Thursday, Friday, have a mock game on Saturday. Um, other thing I want to note before I open up for questions, uh, we had Monday Night Lights last night for all our freshman students. Uh, tremendous crowd, a lot of energy. 
Um, and then we had uh, our Greek leadership at practice today, and the students are going to be are going to play such a vital role for us. You know, we want to create the best home field advantage in college football, and to do that, I think the students are the igniters. And so I encourage our students. Um, we'll be on campus quite a bit over the next week and a half, and I encourage our students to show up and stay and, and be loud and 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 support our guys, and our guys need to do a good job supporting their fellow students on campus as well. So with that, I'll open up for questions. So Neil, the quarterback depth chart is so locked in. What about the rest of it? Do you think they have all locked in, or there's still positions to be won? No, I think coming out of today, tomorrow will be a big evaluation day. Uh, we did a lot of special teams. Um, a lot of those two spots on the depth chart are determined by special teams. You know, uh, if you if you got a chance to be a factor on special teams, then you're going to be more likely to travel, okay, and do those type of things than the guy that's not playing special teams. So we want to get a final look at some full speed action on special teams today. And I think after tomorrow we'll have a really good understanding. I think we had either practice 15 or 16s running, running together in my mind. But I try to give the incoming freshmen and transfers and newcomers the same opportunity that the guys in the, in the spring had. And so we, we got to that point. School starts tomorrow. And, and it's time to kind of figure out who we're going to play and let them know so we can start getting our game plans in check. Did you see the jump between scrimmage one and scrimmage two that you were hoping for? Yeah, you know, offensively for sure we did. Um, defensively, we held, we held some guys out. Um, nothing serious, but we, we held some guys out that were questionable. If it was a real game, they probably would have played. Uh, if a practice, they probably would have been limited. And so we kept them out of the full uh, contact setting. Um, but I thought I did. I thought I saw some jumps from some guys that are very key. You know, if you talk about, think about it on defense, we're young in the secondary. You know, there's going to be four, upwards of four, maybe five um, true freshmen playing in the secondary. And so I thought of Nick Troy Fortune, I thought of Tyke Smith, um, Kerry Martin, those guys made some, made some key movement from scrimmage one to scrimmage two. And then offensive, offensively, you know, it was really Kendall McCoy that made huge jumps from week one to week two. Um, and then Mike Brown and Sam James, guys that haven't had to perform under pressure, it was key that they continue to do well. George Campbell is a guy that, that has shown up consistently too, and I think he made a lot of improvement offensively. He's been steady special teams-wise, but I thought he made a big jump between um, Saturday to Friday scrimmage. Still more shuffling on the offensive line, or are you coming close to? I think we're coming close. You know, I think – we, got, we still got a good idea who four of them are. We're kind of figuring out who the fifth is going to be, um, and that may be a that may be a deal that, that continues to rotate. You know, it's uh, we feel good about those guys. You know, I think y'all talked about it. Um, you know, Seals has been playing a little center. We're, we're still moving him around a little bit, um, but he and McKivitz and Mike Brown have done a really good job. I think Kelby's one of our most improved players, and we've got multiple guys that have. That are, that are competing for that spot. Blaine Scott's a guy that, that had a good uh, good last scrimmage as well. Probably should have included him. Neil, um, what do you keep singling out Brown? That's not a receiver or a cornerback, and I don't see that jumping off team necessarily. Yeah. He keeps getting that type of. He does, and, and he has great skill set. Like, he has um, the potential. Um, you know, he's big, he's strong, he moves laterally well, has good balance. Um, and, I, and part of the reason, probably, Mike, that I, that I talk about it is because it's, it's really kind of an incredible story for me. Somebody who played high school football um, from Compton, California, and he ends up in Morgantown, West Virginia, and all of a sudden he's, he's going to start and play Big 12 football. And so he, he, him having the ability to keep improving and showing that he belongs, is, is, it's been impressive for me. A couple weeks ago, I think Sean and Greg mentioned that holding back Austin just did he see something triggered? Is it, yeah. has that decision making Yeah, I think it's definitely improved. You know, it, it gets talked about a lot. He just hasn't played a lot of football. <laughs> I mean honestly, you know, it's of all the quarterbacks, um, Davey has the most experience of being a two year starter at Bowling Green, but these guys just haven't played a lot. And uh, and so they need reps. You know, we purposely designed practice where our quarterbacks can get a ton of live reps. We talked about uh, two spotting and trying to get as many reps we possibly can for those quarterbacks in live situations. Um, and also just had not had the opportunity to do that. Now, there's been a lot of positives in a situation in Oklahoma and, and, and being around winning and, and seeing high quality or high, really highly productive offenses play. 
but he's had got a lot of live reps. So I, I think at quarterback, it's harder to simulate, you know, in non-live set, segments. And it's easier at receiver and DB, some of those things. It's hard at quarterback. You need some flying, you need some bullets flying at you. And so as the more reps he's gotten, he's improved. The, the two spotting, is that something you've done every year or is it because of the unique? We did it a little bit. No, it's something we've done all the time. And we do it, I think we've talked about this before, is we've done it from an efficiency standpoint to kind of lower our time outside um, and still get the same amount of reps. Uh, we've probably done it longer um, during this fall camp just for the reason is we're trying to get four quarterbacks reps. Is there any plan to give another quarterback some, some reps in, in the opener? Uh, potentially. Yeah, potentially. Not going to talk about it, but maybe. Along those lines, how do you break down now the reps between your ones and your twos? How much do your twos get you to vote now that you're prepping for James Madison? Yeah, it's, it's really about the people that are going to play. You know, so a lot of the twos will get as much as much run as the, as the ones, you know, if you're talking about a receiver. And just because we rotate those guys pretty freely. And, you know, three, four running backs are going are gonna to factor in. So um, we roll them in and out. Uh, not once we get into season, not not too much differently than we do uh, during camp or in a spring setting. Um, is it like the quarterback thirty or nah, it's a little bit more. More, okay. yeah, it's a little bit more. Quarterbacks reps are a little bit different. You know, you go from uh, rotating a whole second unit offensive line is basically you have some rotators on each side of the ball. That's kind of how we work. You know, how did, how did Kendall handle all that was going on around him? I mean, he transfers from Oklahoma. Comes here, and all of a sudden another transfer comes in. Yeah. He's not named the starting quarterback. I mean, uh, and then is how, how has he handled all that through all this? Yeah, I, I think he's done a nice job. He uh, he's mature. You know, you got to remember he's kind of he's went through this song and dance before. You know, had a, they had a competition. I don't, I've never even asked him how the competition went last year. Um, I don't believe Lincoln named a starter until about the same time uh, last year. Uh, so we kind of he's gone through that. You know, he's, he's gone through the whole transfer piece uh, with Jalen coming to, to Oklahoma. So he's dealt with that. Um, and again, he's mature. He's an older kid. Um, he's already graduated from college. Uh, I think he's handled it well. He's gone about his business. The, the thing I think he's probably done as well as could have been imagined is earning the respect of his team. You know, and that's something that I think he's handled extremely well. He came in, didn't say a whole lot, uh, went to work, let his work ethic and, and his level of preparation show. You know how important it was to him. He's done a good job of, of interacting with all aspects of our football team. Uh, so I, I think he's done. I think he's done a really good job. You know, you mentioned Kennedy as one of the guys who kind of stood out recently. What is it about his game that you like, and, and where have you seen him improve maybe since camp started? Yeah, he's got he's gotten stronger. You know, over the last you know six seven months, just from his, his weight's gotten up. Um, he's a guy that he's he's he gets vertical really well. And I know that for some of you, what, you know, what's that mean? Well, he's a one stick guy. He can get it, his shoulders going north and south extremely quick. Um, he's patient. Uh, he has very few negative runs. Catch the ball out of the backfield. And he's got a little, he's got a toughness about him that I like. You know, like yesterday we did a couple blitz pickup uh, periods of practice and he stuck his nose right in there. He's, he, he, he has courage. Um, and I think if he can stay healthy, he's sitting on a big year. You know, and he's played at a high level in this conference before. I think his confidence is higher than he than it ever has been. So, um, at, when you when you get into coaching, you can sense when guys are sitting on big years, and I, and, and I'm hopeful and I believe that he's sitting on big year. What are things? Nah, we're waiting. Yeah, we're waiting. You know, hopefully, um, hopefully we'll find out. You know, it's getting kind of close. You know, so we're going. How we're handling that is we're preparing him to play, and we're hopeful that, it, that he gets the way, or if it doesn't, there's nothing we can do about it. Um, I think he has a strong case. I will say that. I think he has an extremely strong case. Uh, last time we saw you practice, still only one tight end. That was a full go. What's Yeah, so we're back. Yeah, we're back. Banks is back, full go. Um, we hope Jermani Haskins at the end of this week will be back. Um, practicing full go. He has not practiced full go so far in fall camp, but we we're hopeful he'll practice at the end of the week. Um, but Laughlin is a guy that continues to, to do well. You know, it's a big transition. He, last time he played real football, he weighed 190 something pounds. So um, that was the first day of fall camp last year. And, uh, 
So now he's, he's up, well, I'd say that, he's about 220, I guess. But first time he played full tackle football was a senior in high school. He weighed about 190 pounds, and now he's upwards of 250 plus. What happens when you name a starting quarterback? What happens to that guy? What happens to the people around him? Yeah, you handle it. I think you can, it's, how, it's how you handle it. You know, and that's why I always say that, that Austin won the job. I'm not sure any other guys lost it. Um, he won the job by outperforming. Um, that doesn't really change the way I feel about the other guys. I think Jack Allison's been as good a teammate as anybody we've had in our program over the last nine months. Um, I believe in him. I think he's got he's got skills that, that can be in in our league and be productive. I think Trey Lowe, I'm pleased with, with his progress, especially over the summer and into fall camp. And I think Jared Davey's got a, got a ton of potential. Jared really never factored in um, just because I think for him long term, it's better for him to register. Um, and he had, like I said, he had some surgery this summer that, that slowed him down a little bit. Um, but that's how you, you know. It's like it's how you handle it. You know, we'll keep, uh, we'll continue to keep them all active, engaged, and and get them ready to go if need be. Do you think? I guess what I was getting at is, does it bring things together when they know that all right, that's our? Well, I think there's there's always I think there's a calming knowing, even if you don't like the outcome, at least you know. Yeah, he, he, you know, he's pleased. Yeah, he's the one of his best attributes is he, he stays calm. You know, he's he's kind of been calm, collected. Um, I think he's he's felt that uh, you know, as camp's gone through, is he he feels himself getting more comfortable and, and playing at a higher level. Um, he understands it's just beginning. You know, he he wants to start a quarterback job, but he hasn't won a game yet, and so that's you kind of check one one box and move on to the next. You know, you have a relationship with him going way back, but you, know, you never coached him for this yeah. time. What did you learn in the six months or seven months since uh, Austin got here that maybe you didn't know about? Yeah, I think the one thing, Alan, is he's really competitive. Um, I think you can coach him hard, and he takes it. Um, and he takes it, and he doesn't take it personal. And he's he takes ownership of his mistakes, which I think is very, very important. Um, I think he's he's gone about um, entering a difficult situation and really won the respect of his teammates. You know, so he uh, he's been impressive since he's been here. You know, he's, he's done what he's supposed to do and 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 done everything to the best of his ability. Now he's going to go out and prepare um, like a starting quarterback, and he's got to put us in position to win games. Neil, you 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 uh, commented that your court, not court, cornerbacks have, have played well. You know. Yeah, every time you get up there, Sam James, you say, made yeah. two or three. I said they played better in spring. Yeah, two or three. We weren't, we weren't very good at wide out in spring. <laughs> they, we're, uh, we're a little better at wide out now. So, you know, and, and I think Keith Keith has been in 